Hello, everyone. Welcome in. I see we've got a lot of fo folks hopping in and joining us. So we'll just give it one more minute. I think we have, yeah, we've got a good amount of folks already joining, but I think we're, we're supposed to expect a few more. So we will um, just wait a couple more minutes. Cool. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is great to see you all. And for those of you who I don't see your smiling face, it's good to see your name in a box. Um, thank you for being here today and um, learning all about our new grant program, um, the Cultural Arts and Community Promotions Grant offered by the City of San Luis Obispo and the Promotional Coordinating Committee. So um, to get started, I just would like to introduce you all to the team kind of virtually and kind of let you all know the lay of the land and kind of who's all working on this project with us. Um, so of course, our CACP grants, formerly our GIA, Cultural GIA, um, those are led by our Promotional Coordinating Committee. So a couple of our committee members are on today. I see John Thomas and Lori Larian on. Um, and so those are a couple of our um, PCC committee members. Um, we also have our PCC serves as the review subcommittee. So we've got a, a task force or kind of a smaller subcommittee of um, three members of the PCC that act as the review committee. Now, to be clear, all PCC committee members, so all seven members, do receive all applications that are received and or that are submitted, and they review and read through all of those. But it is the subcommittee's job to actually go through to formulate and put together the um, recommendation um, uh, report. They also, the PCC also serves as assigned grant liaisons. Um, so once your organization is awarded grant funding, then you will be assigned a grant liaison with one of the PCC members um, that will help be just kind of another um, friendly touch point and person to help support you um, as your organization is implementing the great event that you're putting together. Um, from a city staff perspective, there are a couple of us uh, that work on, or a few of us that work on this work together. So um, I'm Molly Kano. I'm the tourism manager for the city. We also have Jackie Clark Charlesworth, our tourism analyst with the city. Um, and then we also have Andrea Colinga Lopez. And so she helps support us with um, the grant uh, agreement as you're getting the grant agreements put together and then also um, the final reports and so she helps us kind of behind the scenes with the processing and the paperwork side of our work. And then, of course, we have our incredible team over at the Slow Chamber of Commerce. Um, Holly West is the point of contact over at the Slow Chamber, and Holly will help support the funded grant recipients um, to be able to utilize your complimentary um, marketing support offered um, by the Chamber of Commerce and, um, and paid for and commissioned through the Promotional Coordinating Committee. So that's the team uh, for this grant program. So what is the Cultural Arts and Community Promotions Grant, CACP? So CACP is formerly known as Cultural GIA. So just looking at the list of the names that we have attending today, I think most of you are very familiar with Cultural GIA. Um, so just think of this as kind of the new, um, the new name for what we're calling what previously had been Cultural GIA. It's now CACP. There are, however, some differences in the CACP grant program um, that are different than GIA. So like GIA, the grant must be used for marketing and advertising of the event only. So the event or activity, this, can, this grant can only be used for marketing and advertising. 
the organization must have nonprofit status prior to grant submission. So in order to apply for the grant, one thing is you can have a fiscal sponsor. So we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, so an organization could have a fiscal sponsor. Um, this is for events. This year's CACP is for events that are occurring January 1st through June 30th of 24. Um, and so as we go through this, we're in a little bit of those in that in between year. And if you were able to join us earlier um, this calendar year for the kickoff to the full grant program this year, and we, we were talking about phasing out GIA and then starting CACP, this fiscal year, we're still in that transition. So this round of CACP will only be for the events uh, January 1st through June 30th. It is a competitive grant application. And the application runs from June or from July 15th through September 1st. So the due date is September 1st at 5 p.m. All right, so some of the differences um, between CACP and cultural GIA. Um, CACP will be an annual grant program. So if you're familiar with GIA from back in the day, um, it's really similar to cultural GIA back pre-pandemic, um, but it will be an annual grant program. It will be a competitive grant program. So it means that we won't have fixed grants and grant amounts. We've got some recommendations as we'll talk through on tiers of grant funding. However, it will be competitive. So you'll be able to apply for what you need. And based on the amount of funds that are available, then we will be able to award those funds to um, the organizations um, as the committee makes those considerations. And the organizations um, can be supported through a fiscal sponsor. So those are kind of the differences, um, that it's annual grant, returning to an annual grant, that it is competitive, and then kind of the brand new is um, the fiscal sponsor. So what is a fiscal sponsor? This is a, a big question that we get, get asked. What is a fiscal sponsor? Now, a fiscal sponsor is a nonprofit organization that provides fiduciary oversight, financial management, and other administrative services to help build the capacity of a charitable on charitable projects, right? So what this means is that there can be, while it is required that grant applicants and that the grants funded, the organizations funded and events funded, Funded through CACP have to support a nonprofit, have nonprofit status, the fiscal sponsor could hold that nonprofit status. So if you are applying and your organization or your event is not, is not on your own a nonprofit, you may have a fiscal sponsor that would be able to, um, to apply, you'd be able to apply with in order to access um, the CACP grant. If you are applying with a fiscal sponsor, then the applicant would need to include a letter of consent from that fiscal sponsor, from that organization that acknowledges the support of the application, consents to the um, fiscal sponsorship um, process, and contains that proof of nonprofit status for that fiscal sponsor, sponsor organization. So I already know that there, by just looking at the folks I have on here today, there are some events that are on the call today that do utilize a fiscal sponsor. And so I want to make sure this is a brand new component, very new. So I want to make sure it's clear. If that is your organization, and I know there is one organization on here who acts as a fiscal sponsor for many organizations. So you as that organization would be able to apply for your own grant. So you could apply for your own grant for your own event, but you could also be the fiscal sponsor to multiple other organizations that align under your fiscal sponsorship. Yeah. Big thing, the PCC heard you loud and clear and wanted to make sure that we were able to um, respond and be able to fit this in within the grant um, process. So yes, um, that's how that would work. And basically it would be a letter that would get uploaded and we'll get into that when we go through the steps, but it'll be a letter that gets uploaded with the application that says, your organization will act as the fiscal sponsor for event X, Y, and Z, and then also contains that proof of nonprofit profit status for the fiscal sponsor organization. So we can answer any questions about that. We can actually, 
answer any questions about that now if you'd like, or we can wait into the Q&A section, because I know there's a few of you that I know that this will be important to. So if you have questions about it, you can either um, raise your virtual hand. Perfect. Stacy, I'll go ahead and ask you to unmute. Yeah, there. Now you're, uh, yes. You're, okay. Thanks, Molly. I so appreciate this because I have, I know I see two of my organizations on here that were, I hated for them to be competing against each other. Yes. So, yeah. And then, so then at our event, we've moved it from the spring to the fall. So I'm not going to be eligible to apply for our event in this coming September. When is the, when would the next year's um, application Grant. time be? Yeah. We're, our plan is to go back to the annual cycle. So if you remember from the old kind of GIA pre-pandemic, the goal will be to actually have it open in February and then have the application open kind of February and Mar March timeframe for about six weeks available during that time, be able to make the funding decisions prior to the end of our current fiscal year. So then that way events from July 1 through June 3rd, July 1 of 24 to June 30th of 25, will all be able to be funded in that one grant cycle. Okay, great. And and is there that mandatory meeting going to be required again at City Hall or is that coming back or that's something that the committee is definitely discussing. Okay. So we've um we understand both sides of it, but there are folks that are not attending the informational sessions, which we do make optional now for the that we've had optional for now. Um, we've got folks that aren't attending those that are not hearing the same information and are asking questions that they would have been able to understand if they attended the the sessions. So okay. so right. the we'll watch for those no <laughs> notifications then. Most definitely. Yeah. All right. And we Thank will you. communicate out as well. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to keep rocking and rolling then. Um, because I know that fiscal sponsorship was kind of the big kind of new process. So the next component is um, nonprofit status. We've had a ton of questions from folks and submissions, even through our cultural GIA with various forms of nonprofit status documentation. So we want to make it super clear. If you are trying to submit your grant application, you need to have your 501c3 or c6 status um, uploaded and accompanied with your grant application. This is an example. This is a screenshot. We were able to get the um, approval from this organization to be able to have this on here um, to be able to show you all what this looks like. So this is what the form looks like. It's uh, it's documentation from the IRS that sends it over to you and says very clearly that you have um, 501c6 or 501c3 status. It then gives us the information we need from the employer identification and the DLN number. So this is the information, this is the documentation that we are looking for, for the proof of nonprofit status. So again, that would be if you, you as your applying or organization have that, or this would be what would support your fiscal sponsor letter that you would be submitting. All right, so CACP, um, it is a competitive grant. And so that was kind of one of the big three changes, moving back to annual cycle, having the fiscal sponsor, and then being a competitive grant program. So it is a competitive grant program. These tiers have been established to kind of give you an idea of what your event might want to be able to ask for within the funding. Um, based on, on you know, what you're looking to do. So you can kind of think of it as first tier, kind of that 500 to $3,000 level. This is for events with local reach. So sometimes these are smaller events. Um, these are events, of course, that are still social, cultural, recreational benefit to the community, um, but probably have kind of a smaller or a more local reach. The second tier, that 3,000 to 7,500, is probably more for those countywide reach um, type events. So again, all of these funds are to be used to offset your marketing and your advertising expenses. So it kind of makes sense that when you're small and you're more local, you probably have a little bit of a smaller ad budget that you're spending. As you get countywide, that grows a little bit more. And then of course, our third tier, that 7,500, which you know you could even dream big, right? Up to 20,000. In my almost 12 years with the city, I've not seen a $20,000 grant through this grant program, but you can 
dream big and definitely make the case that that's something that would be needed for your event. Um, that would be for events that are really targeting folks from outside the county to be able to participate um, in your event or activity taking place here in San Luis Obispo. So those are kind of the competitive grant tiers. You're not going to have to say I'm tier one, tier two, or tier three. This is more just to kind of guide your consideration as you're writing your grant application. So the use of the grant funds, um, as I mentioned, the CACP grant funds must be used exclusively for marketing and advertising expenses related to the execution of the event or activity. So it has to be only marketing and advertising, no production expenses, no staffing ex expenses. It has to be marketing and um, advertising. We do not have a breakdown of um, like we had in, in previous GIA and our modified GIA program where a certain percentage had to be spent in one tier or the other. That's not how it's structured this way, um, but it, all expenses must be used. Um, all grant expenses must be used on marketing and advertising. So acceptable marketing expenses include things like graphic design or printing. Um, it includes contracted services that could be related to, that are directly relating to the event. So it could be if you've got a PR service or a social media service, or maybe a um, web design service that is specifically for the event. Um, those expenses that are relating to the digital enhancements of maybe your newsletters or creating your email campaigns, those, those are acceptable marketing um, expenses. Acceptable advertising expenses are limited to the actual cost of the paid media or the advertisement. So basically when you're paying to put to put your event, you know, have your event boosted on um, Facebook, or if you're paying for, you know, a, a piece in the new times or something like that, those would be your advertising expenses. Grants are not given for the following expenses, office overhead or payroll, equipment, scholarships or honoraria, um, general organization operating expenses, supplies or decor, um, venue rental, and then fees for event permits, performers, speakers, presenters, vendors, or event production contractor fees. So, you know, your event, your, 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 you know, event coordinator, that type of thing that would not fit into this space. Again, the purpose of this grant is all for marketing and advertising expenses directly. So the committee, as we read through and the committee's looking at what, what is submitted for application, they'll be making considerations based off of what is plugged in to the into the application, and they'll be funding based off what you include. But also when you submit your final report, if you have expenses that you submit in your final report on how you use your grant funds, it will get kicked back to you. If it's one of, if it's something like this has been included, um, we'll ask for you to reconsider that or to either refund the funds or give us a, um, a different explanation if there was um, a different uh, expense that needed to be associated with that line. We understand sometimes, you know, paperwork things get get twisted up, but we want to make sure that it's all on the up and up and only used for marketing and advertise, advertising. All right. Organization eligibility. So we've gone through this a lot, but you must have a nonprofit status or nonprofit fiscal sponsor. You must be responsible and for the planning and the provision of that social, cultural, or recreational program and have the um, managerial and fiscal competence to be able to perform that. Um, you have to be in good standing with the city. And so what good standing means is that if you'd received a previous promotional grant um, during a different funding cycle that you must have made sure that all of your final reporting has been submitted and taken care of. And so you, in order to be able to be eligible for these grants, you have to make, make sure that all your, all of your uh, details are finalized with any prior grant that you've already received. 
Um, you must extend your program to the general public. So this has to be events that are open for everyone. It can't be something that's only membership based or, um, you know, part of a specific or closed group. It has to be open to the general public. And um, the your, your organization must not have received a cultural GIA grant for an event occurring earlier this year. So kind of in this current funding cycle. So July 1st through December 31st. So again, because this is kind of that transition year, you had to make the choice between GIA or CACP. So if you received GIA this fiscal year, it wouldn't be, this wouldn't be an option for you. This would be for a something new taking place January 1st through December or June 30th. Oof. All right, event eligibility. So events must take place January 1st through June 30th, 2024. They must be in person and take place within the city or directly adjacent to the city. So what that can look like if it's something that takes place at Cuesta College, if it's something that takes place at El Choro Regional Park, those are all directly adjacent. If it's an event that takes place in Morro Bay, that would not be a fit for this. If it's an event that takes place in Avila Beach, that would not be directly adjacent as well. So we realize that technically Cal Poly and Cuesta are not technically part of the city, um, but we consider those to be directly adjacent. So those would work. Um, the event has to be primarily focused on cultural, social, or recreational benefit to the residents of San Luis Obispo. Um, and so again, that is, um, you know, the spirit of the type of event or activity that you're putting together. Events that are not eligible, they will not be eligible if they're political in nature or of a primary purpose of fundraising or recognition. So we realize that a lot of the events that are done have a fundraising component, right? Especially from a nonprofit status, right? A nonprofit organization. You may have a wine event, for example, where the main purpose of the event is to come taste wine, maybe enjoy bites, whatever that looks like. However, um, the main purpose would be that experience and not necessarily a fundraising. So the difference between an auction versus a social type event. And then the event uh, must be in alignment with the city's core values, as well as public health and safety guidelines. All right, so now jumping into the application itself. So for those of you who completed a cultural GIA grant, especially over the past um, three years, are familiar with the digital application, um, but I wanna walk you through some of these components. So for our um, digital application, it's all available online through slowcity.org slash CACP, and that will take you to the main landing page. Um, that's probably also where you registered for this webinar today. Um, so that's the main uh, go-to spot for all the information, including the session that will be recorded and posted um, following, um, following today's, the conclusion of today's session. Um, there are four sections of the application. So the first section is the grant information and guidelines. So basically written out um, all of the information that we've covered today, goes into a little bit more detail if you want to read through certain sections, um, and also has that information and the requirements for that fiscal sponsorship. It's on there as well. Um, but that's that section one. Section two is the meat and potatoes. That's where the grant application lives. Um, and so section two has all of the different questions and components that you'll need to fill out. Section three has the upload of the required documents that you need to have for the application. That's where you'll upload those documents. And then section four is a component that you can read through, select the box that you um, agree that you've provided the information to the best of your knowledge, and you've got the um, authority to be able to do that for your organization. And, um, and then that's where the sign and date um, comes into play as well, so that you can submit that since we do have a deadline on when the application must come in. So that's the general overview of the application itself. A few spots that I want to call attention to within section two, there 
is a lot of information. Um, where first is, you know, uh, contact information for your organization, contact information for your um, the person that's writing the grant. Because sometimes the person writing the grant is different than the organization, is also different than maybe the person who will be the the contact for the actual event itself. So all of that information is in there. Then it also has information on um, describing what the event is, what is the reach of the event, how many attendees are you expecting, all of that kind of general information about the event that you're applying for. Then we get into a component of the budget. And so I want to call this component out. This information is very important um, into in the review of what you're putting together. So there's there's kind of four number areas that you'll be filling in. The first is the overall program budget. And so you'll see kind of the source, the income and the expense within this section. Now, you obviously will have more than just one line of, you know, source for your various income for the event. Um, and so there's a little button right here, add, that you can click on and you can add as many rows as you would like. We didn't pre-populate a number of rows because it's a digital application and this is a required field. You have to include the source, you have to include the income, and you have to include the expense. Um, and so, you will add those for each individual line that you have for your program budget. Media plan, that's the second component. This is the detailed media plan for your um, traditional and your online uh, media, however you're promoting the event. Again, again, same thing, you'll have a media outlet, the type and frequency, and then the cost of advertising. And you can add as many rows as you would like to be able to have everything listed on there. Detail, more detail, the better. So that is, um, we're, we definitely are asking for the media outlet. So it's not just advertising all the time for two months before my event and $10,000. We need a little bit more detail for the committee to be able to review. And then the grant funding request. So the overall program budget and the media plan is with or without our funding. This is what your program budget is. This is what your plan is for your media. And then the grant funding request is the specific areas that you're seeking support for. So it could be, and it, sh it is likely repetitive to maybe some of your source areas or your media outlet areas. That it can be repetitive to those, but it may also include something else um, that hasn't been already um, uh, reflected in the above. So if it is your printing, if it is your mailings, if it is, you know, those types of things, that is where you'll want to um, put the description of what it is and then the amount requested. The committee will be working off of this grant funding request allocation as they're making the determination for what the grant funding um, is that can be awarded for your event. And then last but not least is the grant funding request. So the reality is that this, all of this kind of requested amount items under this grant funding request allocation will should add up to this total grant requested, um, but that's an, another good spot for you just to double check your math. Um, and so then the committee can then see the total amount that you're requesting for support, but they can also then see a breakdown of where, what the different components are for that request. Okay, so section number three um, is the upload section. So I just wanted to show this to you all so you could see how this looks um, since it's a little bit different than what we've had in the past for cultural GIA. Um, you'll be able to, the components that you need to upload are all listed here. So the applicant organization's most recent and complete financial statement, you'll be able to upload this here. You can upload up to 10 files if you need it. Um, it's probably only one PDF that you're attaching or uploading here, um, but you would be able to upload them right into this section. The next thing would be your applicant tax exempt certification or that of your fiscal sponsor. So that goes to that IRS statement that I showed you earlier. That's where you would upload that here. Then if you're applying under a fiscal sponsor, you'll include that letter of consent to apply right here on number three. So that's where you would upload that there. If you are not applying with a fiscal sponsor, this will not be required. So it, it the system will know that that one doesn't need to have anything uploaded in. 
And then last but not least, the listing of all officers and staff. So that could look like an org chart for you. That could look like a downloaded page from your website, um, but you'll be able to upload that uh, right here on number four. Okay, so that gets us through the application itself. Um, so again, the four different sections, the first section is kind of the information. The second section has the um, grant details that you'll actually be filling in. The third section is all the uploads. And then the fourth section is where you just certify that you're um, providing information accurately and that you have the authority to provide that for your organization and sign it um, and it'll get date, uh, date and time stamped. So now, once you've submitted your application, then it goes through an evaluation with the PCC. So the CACP subcommittee will be reviewing those applications and then recommending the grant awards to the full PCC. So again, um, this is there's about $60,000 that it's available in funding right now through this CACP program for those events J January 1st through June 30th. Um, I can tell you historically, when we've done the annual um, GIA applications, we've had more than double um, what the requested amount is versus what is available to be funded. Um, and so there's hard decisions that the PCC has to make. Um, as it goes through the competitive grant program. So the subcommittee will review and make the initial recommendations that will be based on the set of criteria. So um, the information obviously is your application clear um, and concise? Does it have all of the information that is, um, is it complete? Does it have everything in it that it needs to have? And then um, is it, you know, are the funding sources that you're asking for and are the expense um, components it, you know, is it reasonable? And then how does it rank up? It is a competitive grant program. So then from there, the PCC will give the, um, the based on the applications, the, the recommendations will be made to the full PCC. The PCC will then give the final approval for the grant awards for this fiscal year. And then if awarded, then the funds will be distributed via check from the city within 60 days of receiving, receiving the signed grant agreement. So you'd fill out um, the grant agreement from our team, and then um, we would process that payment so that you would have that payment in hand um, for your specific grant. So once your grant is awarded and um, once your event is awarded the grant, then you'll be able to also access the complimentary marketing program support um, that's made available to you through the Slow Chamber of Commerce. Um, and so there's four components of what that um, complimentary marketing support will allow um, or will grant you, will be made available to you and um, really to help inform media and regional partners on your event. So different components, whether it be adding it to community event calendars, um, like the event calendar on visitslow.com or on SlowCal, um, on SlowCal's uh, calendar of events as well, and also the Slow Chambers calendars. Um, so getting them, getting your event added on those on your behalf. Um, also including your event in uh, press releases to local media. So doing roundup releases on what's going on for the quarter, as well as you know any specific details about your event. Um, also to be a helpful resource, so providing one-on-one -on -one support and, um, and being able to help you develop a promotional strategy if that's something that your, um, that your event might need help with. Um, also to distribute promotional material to City of Slow hotels. So um, the visitor center goes and visits um, the, the hotels uh, all throughout the city about once a quarter. And so if there's information that would need to be provided um, to those properties, that would be a great resource um, for you as well. And then also sharing your event on all of the digital platforms on the Slow Chamber side um, with website, with Facebook, with Twitter, with, you know, different um, social media um, sources for them there. And then last but not least, displaying and distributing the promotional um, materials for your, your event through the Visitor Center. So having those available and to help spread the word um, through the Visitor Center downtown. So all of this, um, all of this is provided uh, to you complimentary um, once your organization has been funded for a CACP grant. 
Okay. And then um, last but not least, um, once your event, then you've submitted your application, it's been reviewed, it's been recommended, you signed your agreement, you've spent the money, you've utilized all the complementary marketing components, and your event is now over. You will be required to submit a final report. It can be submitted digitally online um, through, it'll be made available on that CACP um, landing page. So slowcity.org slash CACP, um, a component or a section on that website will include the final report information. So you'll be able to fill out just similar to how you submit the application. You'll be able to do the same thing for your final report. And um, it will include an administrator's report. So you'll be able to tell us about your event and what took place, um, statistical survey, who, we ten who attended, how many folks came to the event, um, you know, did you find out where folks were visiting from, you know, all of the information, um, statistically speaking. Then a financial report, um, how did your event do? And what funding did you receive for the grant and how were those grant funds used? Um, and then city recognition. So any proof of city recognition that you had. So did you, you know, um, uh, examples of how you had the city emblem on this website, or if it was um, recognized as being, you know, funding provided through promotional grant from the city of San Luis Obispo, those types of items. And that report will be due within 90 days of the funded event. So, um, this again, we're in this little bit of this kind of funky transitional time period as we're going from cultural GIA to CACP and then next year going on to that annual program cycle for CACP. So you'll have 90 days, um, even if your event takes place in June, you'll still have 90 days to be able to, to um, submit that final report. All right, and so just a recap of the timeline. Um, applications are open now. They are due September 1st at 5 p.m. So make sure we did have cultural GIA applicant applications that came in after the time frame that we weren't able to accept. So please make sure you get your application in by September 1st at 5 p.m. It is a hard deadline. Um, the subcommittee will review and recommend those, and those recommendations will be made at the October 11th um, PCC meeting. So with that, what questions um, can I help answer? Or maybe there are no questions because we covered it all. Jackie, was there anything that came into any other? Nope. Nope. All righty. Well, if you think of any questions, feel free to send them over to me, mkano at slowcity.org. Um, so feel free to send those over. And um, thank you all for coming to this info session. We really, really appreciate it. And we are excited about launching this new grant program. So thank you all for your time.